Good evening. Um, tonight's going to be more of an update on the last video. Um, on the last video, we looked at cleaning um, a disc um, and diagnosing why it was faulty. It turned out the disc was clean. Um, <clears throat> those of you that have watched it, couldn't get me head round why we had problems um, figuring out why there was a bad sector on there. Now, I have written an update on the the last video under the description. Um, there's like an update part before this the main description comes in, so you can have a look. But I'll basically give you the rundown. Uh, I'm going to show you this... Um, lovely guy his name's monodiff pen and um, I put on the video if you um, see anything wrong or I, I always say comment and you know we're all learning at the end of the day drop us a line so the guy on the Commodore Amiga Facebook forum when I posted the video he basically said this so I watched most of the video and there are a few things I would point out. Firstly, HXC does support loading IPF images directly. Now I was having problems chucking the IPF in and this is where I was going wrong. For some reason my version of HX HXC wasn't actually reading the IPF file I downloaded from archive to write to the disk. Um, I was getting confused. <laughs> <laughs> and taking um, what it had found that Grease Weasel, Grease Weasel had written, which was the SCP, um, and reconverting it. So it's exactly the same file that I'm comparing against. So that's why. Um, I figured out why. I'm going to get to that in a minute, and I'll explain how to install what's called Caps Image that he highlights here. It's a plugin that enables you to read IPFs and display it like can like you can see here or if you watch the previous video. <clears throat> so I would have got to my original I would have got to a conclusion to say the disc that I originally read, which was the hard drive in two disc, uh, was actually showing forty. Now we're not sure whether uh, someone had wrote over the game, which is what he's saying there. Um, again, you can pause this and read what Monodiff said, um, or whether there was a virus somewhere. Um, but the reason why I couldn't view it is I thought my HXC was reading IPFs, and it wasn't. It was just taking what I had read, read with Grease Weasel and uh, just converting it to an exact same file, just renamed different. So there's the answer. And he, he basically outlines that all here. Great guy, knowledgeable. He's obviously been doing this a, a long, longer time than me. Um, so yeah, there you go. That that's my answer. Um, so again, I have updated the last <coughs> video with an explanation. So hopefully you shouldn't go wrong. I try and get and update my last videos if there was something wrong. Um, with a later explanation like a lot of YouTubers do. So hopefully that helps. Um, again, I always try and double check, but that, is, that really got me that. So what we're going to do, um, let's just have a look. He's also given me a nice pointer. Um, so this is part of the HXC software I'm talking about. He's also given me this, and he said if you click the disk browser, you can actually, once you've read the image, like drag and dropped it like I showed you before, um, you can actually read the file structure with the disk browser there. So you can actually compare two disks, um, you know, file name based, and see if anything's missing or corrupt. And, that, and again, that's a great pointer, and uh, thanks a lot, Monodiff, you bloody brilliant bloke <laughs> so yeah no great bloke so there you go um, now to ha install a HXC software WinUAE needs it so 
I was getting another issue where you, we knew he wasn't um, reading IPFs as well, it had error and, and come up, oh, you need this plug-in. So I'll talk you through that as well. So what you would need to do, um, there's one version that I downloaded, which is this, and I'm gathering everyone's running the 64, 64-bit. 64 if not, use the 32-bit version. It's probably less complicated, but... Uh, I use the 64-bit version. Now, WinUAE seems to like the win the 64-bit version of this. I've got the latest version, 5.1. Again, you can get it from there, which is, these are the guys that archive floppy disks. This is how it all started, I think, but again, correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> so I downloaded version 5.1. That's the 32-bit version there, but I downloaded the 64-bit, okay? Difference is you'll only get the 32-bit version. Um, this is the part that's going to enable to read IPFs in WinUAE and HXC. It might be simpler to do 32-bit, but I'll get there. So I've already downloaded this, so let's go to what I've already got. Uh, let's just open my file browser. Let's go to downloads. Um, so this is the file that's downloaded. And the only thing you'll need in this <coughs> are these. So that and that. That's your 32-bit. Again, this is contained in the 64-bit version. I gather the 32-bit hasn't got this folder. Uh, all this other stuff is used for developers, I, I gather, or C programmers. Don't know. But there, well, I, I think you need this. I'm not too sure. Maybe you just need this. But I've chucked both of them in. Maybe this is part of the program in here. So I'll put them to. Actually, we'll try that. I'll, I'll delete that file and see if the um, WinUAE and HXC still runs. I think that is possibly the only file you need there. Um. It might be because I'm thinking back to Amiga days. Oh, there's a library file there. <laughs> anyway, X64, exactly the same. So because you've got that lib in there, I thought I'd include it. <clears throat> so, I've already gone into my WinUAE folder. So it's installed in program files, WinUAE. And all you do is you drop the caps image and the library there. Okay. Uh, this is the 64 bit. So you just drop it in the same folder as where the main execu executable is. Um, <clears throat> it um, it probably worked with the 32 bit. Just drop them in there and see. Um, someone did say on a forum I read, just double checking, that if you're having problems with the 64 bit version, just use the 32 bit anyway. So up to you. But anyway. So that's where you put it in WinUAE. Uh, the HXC software. Um, so I've got that here. You would just drop, drop that in the, the folder where it says Windows. Okay. So again, you're dropping it in the same folders where the EXE is and it, it will just pick it up. So I'm going to do a little bit of a test now. I'm going to delete this lib file. And I'm going to do it win UAE and see if that works. If it does, then uh, we don't need the, that, that file there. So if I do just boot up 500 floppy drives, uh, let's just select something. Okay, you try booting it. Well, it looks like it's booting, so possibly you don't need that lib file. Okay, so let's exit out of that. That's cool. All right, so there you go. There's your answer. That's the only file you need. And let's try the HXC. Move this over so you can see it. So we'll load. <coughs> we'll do a drag and drop because that's what I'm used to. So if I go downloads, um, let's try it. 
try that. So these are IPFs. You might need to extract this first because it's not it won't read a zip. Yep, it read. That's good. So we go to track analyzer. Well, you can use that uh, disk browser if you want that we showed you. And there's there's the disk. I'm gathering if that's an Amiga DOS formatted disk, it wouldn't read most of this otherwise. But if it, if you can read it and it's an Amiga DOS disk, that's that's good. At least you can use this to compare. And the the usual utility we use. This is going to be perfect because obviously it's a ripped. There you go. There you go. So there you go. Hopefully that helps. Um, I don't think you're going to get any issues with that. Um, um, there's one thing I want to talk about. Um, uh, well, two actually. I was just going to touch on something. Uh, I haven't spoke about this before, but I just I've started keeping disc spares now. When you get into discs, opening them, replacing the the donut inside, and this out and the other, I would keep your spare discs. You know the donuts that you steal from inside, donuts <laughs> or media, whatever you want to call it, inside to put in other discs. Let me just go to the, put this one on, that's it. That's probably better. So there you go. After you've taken the media out of the discs, I would keep these because um, you never know what happens to a disc when you're trying to recover it. I mean, if there's any game discs with labels and you end up, trying to cut again there's posts in there i haven't shown you this yet but these these tiny posts that you're cutting sometimes they're they're glued there as well they're machined plastic welded in there if he's gonna focus yeah so either they're either um welded there or there okay um, you can kind of see the edge of the disc. If you look carefully, you'll see an outer circle just on that print of that disc, and that's that's where the edge of the disc is. You don't want to be bringing your um, Stanley knife past where this, this curve is because your disc sits on there, and you're going to tear the inside filter paper, uh, the filter media, the white stuff, or you're going to dig into this side and dig into the disc and you're, and you're knackered. So, again, if you, you just tilt, I'll just tilt the disc in the light, you can just see a little tab there. And on the inside, you're, you're trying to cut that tab away as well. So if you can't get in this side, and you think you're gonna bust it, because some, some are, they're a little bit finicky, you can just see two little tabs when you tilt it in the light where they plastic welded it inside and again you're just trying to pry it open and get your Stanley knife in there and just cut it open uh, it's a bit of a task I'd say just get crappy discs from somewhere and just just practice it's gonna be practice 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 and that's all you need really so yeah keep your discs spare um, because you just never know um, and they, they're going for quite a bit of money on eBay as well. Um, the other thing that I'm keeping spare of these, so you got all the front, the front spring-loaded um, disc protectors. Again, um, if you sent a disc and one of them's bent up to hell, the disc's okay. For example, from someone that sent something in. You can replace it with one of them and, and just never throw anything away, including your springs. So the springs that hold that um, metal catch in. Again, keep all your springs. I've kept a tab. Um, because again, a spring will ping off. Or if someone uh, sent in a disc and you, there's no spring on there. As long as you've got a spare floppy disc, brill. But <laughs> those springs keep them. 
Um, again, it's on that um, floppy disk video I mentioned in the last one. If you're trying to get that, that clip off, that spring off, there's a video that's in the link for the last one um, under um, the cleaning of a game disk video. Go and watch that and there's a link in there and I think on the end screen for the people watching on a big telly, you don't get the cards that come halfway through the video wherever I post them. Um, I noticed that when I was what, just watching through on my telly the other day. So I posted uh, like an end screen video and that comes up on the telly. So just check that out and uh, that'll show you how to get into one of them metal clips without busting the disc apart. Again, if you're recovering something someone sent you or you're trying to do it for yourself, you want to get into in there without doing any damage. Anyway... I think that's it a bit for about tonight. Uh, for tonight, that's quite a quite a small um, quite a small stream. Um, so one more thing, yeah, just one more thing because um, I'm going to forget next time. A couple of these are knackered, right? So I'll just chuck these in a bin. You don't really need to keep these, okay? Um, once you've got that, I mean that that was that come from a scored disc. You can see how bad that is. You you can't get them scores out. That's it. That's your lot. <laughs> um, there's no point keeping these. I mean, there's no. I, I don't think there's any point keeping them. But if one ever delaminates, so I'll show you here. If one ever comes off, and it's quite easy to do. If you ever take one of these out of disc to clean. God help you. But if it ever delaminates, so some get weak and they start with a with a bit of washing, start doing this. Now there's a way around it. Don't make it worse. Just put a tiny bit of epoxy resin on that lip, and but I mean the tiniest part because if that starts spreading, you're in trouble. Because funnily enough, Mon Monodiff said about this as well. Um, and we both had a laugh about it. I said, "Here, yeah, tell me about it. I've, I've tried, tried before. <clears throat> if this delaminates completely from this metal spindle, it almost looks like you can glue it, and it'll go exact, you know, back exactly where it is. But I've tried that before. Chances are, getting that back to where it was would be a nightmare. And this could, I mean, the disc." You can read and write to it still, but if you if you're if you're expecting to put the disc back with the data on it, back on that metal spindle, forget it. It'll be out of alignment. You'll never get it back, and um, you'll never ever get the data back off of it. So again, be careful. You can still use it if you're um, expecting to erase it read it and write it because again it's still a usable disc just the platters slightly off um and the data before it you ain't going to get back so there's probably methods out there you can i think there's um a guy that can read them with an oscilloscope and get raw data and can offset tracks and all that but um that's a lot of time and we don't really need it for what we're doing. That's, you know, we've got all the images for Amiga out there and um, all the different backups and, you know, we've got everything we need. So it's not too too crazy we need it. Uh, you know, only if personal uh, personal data on disks and that, there's not much you can do. And it depends how badly you want it. So <clears throat> if it's something for, I, I suppose... Um, Preservation purposes, like there's a, an original Amiga, Amiga game one of the developers have made, then I suppose you go to, you know, all belts, all belts and braces, and and go to recover it. Anyway, twenty minutes of chat. I think that's about it. Um, yeah, enjoy your weekend, and have fun. All the best. Hope you learned something. See you later.